Hey everyone, it's Megan. Welcome to my January slash February book haul. I have accumulated around 20, 21 books over the past couple of months that I would like to share with you today. One thing that I will note though that is a bit in my favor and sort of justifies this insanity is that I did not pay full price for any of these books. So the first pile of books, which is the largest pile of books, came uh, from uh, second hand, so mostly Value Village, but there are also a few that um, were full price but were marked down in some way or another, and so I managed to get them. The first book that I have here is Keep the Espedistra Flying by George Orwell. This is the last uh, Orwell book that I really wanted to get my hands on um, because the cover is so lovely and because I've been enjoying uh, what I've been reading by George Orwell. I've read 1984 and Animal Farm by him, so I'm not sure what this one's about, but Ariel from Ariel Bissett read it and loved it, and well, she's the hugest Orwell fan ever, but yeah. So I'm excited about this. I also picked up Between Shades of Grey by Ruta Sepetys. This book is the first book by Miss Sepetys, and it is takes place in uh, World War II in Lithuania. And it's the story of a girl and her family who get taken away to live, I think, in like the Sahara or something like really northern, very snowy, very isolated part of Russia during World War II. And it was just a really good story. I read it years ago and absolutely loved it and vowed that I would own everything by Miss Sepetys. I also managed to pick up A Giant Problem by Holly Black and Tony DiTolizzi. This is the second book in the Beyond the Spiderwick Chronicles uh, trilogy, um, which is a spin-off uh, trilogy from the original Spiderwick Chronicles. And with getting this book, this means that I have all eight of the books of the entire friggin series so I can finally marathon them back to back and I'm so excited about that I have been finding them secondhand progressively slowly over the past year year and a half because I knew I wasn't gonna want to order it online and pay more than I knew that I would end up paying so this is exciting the next thing I picked up is it was a dark and stormy night by Janet and Alan Alberg um, I believe this is an older tale it was a dark and stormy night um, I think it's part of an old poem but this uh, book has some lovely illustrations and I think it's a more of a beginner's early readers uh, chapter book but the reason I got this mainly is because I love Janet and Alan Alberg they wrote the Jolly Postman and Peepo and each peach pear plum I just love them as children's illustrators they're British and they just have this little sweet little British sensibility to their um, work so I was happy to get this. I also managed to find My Brother's Book by Maurice Sendak. This book I had never heard of but I found it in the children's section and so where it was originally $18.95 I only paid a buck fifty and I think that's amazing um, it, to, because I found this in perfect condition and it's got that beautiful um, illustrative quality to Sendak's work and I never heard of this one and don't really know what it's about except just that this is the last um, fully completed book of Maurice Sendak so I was happy to pick this one up too. I also found The Slow Regard of Silent Things by Patrick Rothfuss. This is the not well technically the third book in the King Killer Chronicles series. It's not actually the third book. The third book has been long anticipated. This is like a shorter novella, like I think supplemental reading to the series, but the fact that I found it for so cheap when it just came out like a year or two last year or something and it used to be $14, I was pretty satisfied that I picked this up. I also found this edition of The Hobbit by J.R.R. Tolkien. I already own um, the hardcover edition that has the actual illustrations done by Mr. Tolkien, but this one follows the series, the, the uh, um, series of editions that I really want to get because they have the beautiful illustrations done by Alan Lee. Watercolor, I believe, um, illustrations, and they're just fabulous. So the fact that I found The Hobbit, I, I couldn't resist. So I have The Hobbit and Fellowship of the Ring, and I just really need to try to find the last two, and that's going to be hard because they are not available in stores anymore, and they are hard to find online. I also found Redwall by Brian Jacques. This is the first book in the Redwall series, the infamous Redwall series, and I grew up watching the uh, Teletoon uh, cartoon version of uh, the TV show of the series, and um, really enjoyed it, loved it. I will re-watch it like forever, but I've never actually read the series. So I found it in the edition that I want with this sweet little medieval style and like gold spine for super cheap, like a buck. And it's in great condition. 
I was satisfied. I also found The Awakening by Kelly Armstrong. This is, I want to say, the second book in the Darkest Powers trilogy by her. Um, it's a trilogy which I read uh, years ago, maybe even high school. I think so, actually. So the trilogy is about this girl, Chloe, and I believe she is a necromancer, and she goes to live in this school or hospital where other people like her with different abilities, um, like, you know, have to stay. And um, I think they break out at one point, and there's an uprising of some sort, and they have to fight. I just barely remember what happens. I just remember that I loved it so, so much, and I love Kelly Armstrong's writing. So with this book, I have the trilogy once again. I'm thrilled about that. The next book that I was super excited to find is The Wind in the Willows by Kenneth Graham. This, what makes this exciting is that it is the edition that has the illustrations by E.H. Shepard. If you don't uh, know, E.H. Shepard is the guy who did the Winnie and the Pooh illustrations. And so I found out when I did my illustration course a year ago that he had also illustrated Win in the Willows, and I decided that I was not going to rest until I found an edition with that. It has taken me this long to find it, but it is beautiful. Um, it's an older uh, version, but it has full colored illustrations, which is wonderful, so I was really excited to find this. These last two here are ones that I have wanted for a while and found at reduced price. The first one, okay, I was in chapters, just looking around, and I, don't usually pay attention to the bargain table, but this caught my eye. And it is The Queen of the Tearling by Erica Johansson in hardcover. This hardcover is extremely gorgeous, and it's got a frickin' ribbon, which you never see anymore. And the end pages, oh, look at this spine. It's such a beautiful book, and I just really wasn't expecting to see that because it was like around $30 regularly, you know, when it just came out, and I don't know what happened. They must have got like an influx of like additional hardcovers or something because I saw it for $7.99 and I was like, I would be nuts to not pick this up. While I have the second book in a uh, soft cover, I don't even know that it even came out in hardcover, I don't mind. I just really wanted to have the matching uh, covers. <laughs> The next book I got from Book Outlet, and it is this beautiful edition of Alice's Adventures in Wonderland slash Through the Looking Glass uh, by Lewis Carroll, but this edition was designed by the great Vivian Westwood. Um, as you can see, it's beautiful. It's kind of trippy. The end papers are interesting, to say the least, but I love that the outside is like cloth-bound, pretty classic. And most importantly, it has those beautiful illustrations straight from the 1800s by Sir John Tenniel. I've been looking for uh, an edition for a long time uh, for Alice of one that I'd like to get, and I got this one, and I think it is beautiful. I can't wait to reread it. The last book that I got at a sort of reduced price is The Secret Garden by Joanna Bosford, an inky treasure hunt and coloring book. I believe this is the first one that she did, if I'm not mistaken. I believe the second one after that was Enchanted Forest. But yeah, this um, she is my favorite adult coloring book artist. I've talked about her before. Um, she I follow her on YouTube. YouTube and Instagram and her creations are just splendid. I don't even color in the most of the time, mostly because of a lack of time, but when I do sometimes it's usually during Scandal or whatever TV series that I'm binge watching at that time. And I just love to look at her stuff. She is such a beautiful, talented artist and I'm thrilled to have all of her books now. These next four books that I got are all from the UK, which is pretty cool. Um, I ordered them all online just at various points over the last couple months um, because um, mainly because buying them from there would have been a lot cheaper than trying to get them here, number one. And number two, a number of these aren't actually available in uh, Canada as of yet. Or if they are, they're just stupidly priced. So the first one that I have here is Fifty Shades of Feminism, edited by Lisa Abig Apignanesi, Rachel Holmes and Susie Orbach. I totally butchered that first name, like I do in almost every video. So this is pretty described. There are um, many essays, um, pieces done by this list of women here on the back uh, giving their views on feminism. And I picked this up because I saw this on Jen Campbell's Instagram um, because I'm always looking to expand my feminism shelf. And uh, she read it and she warned that there were some stuff that she didn't agree with, like pieces that made her angry. So it was good to have fair warning going into this, but I still look forward to reading it anyway. 
Anyway, I'm excited. The next two books I have here were both edited by the same woman and share a similar premise. They are Just Add Watercolor and Freehand Sketching Tips and Tricks Drawn from Art. And these are both super beautiful books. I read Just Add Watercolor last summer and really enjoyed it. And it's basically um, just techniques on one side, technique applied on the other and just so many different artists and different techniques to um, try out. And it's the same thing with this one, um, but on the other side, it actually gives you like information on the type of drawing that it is and the medium and everything. And so, yeah, I got this uh, like over a month ago and I'm still about halfway through reading it. So I'm still reading this one for the first time and loving it, but I can't wait to reread this one too. And I'm just so excited to have them both now because now I can just go forth and apply these techniques to my own work and have a lot of fun doing it. The last book that I ordered from the UK is Salt to the Sea by Ruta Sepetys. This is her most recent book. It literally just came out like last week, I think. And um, yeah, I saw this cover on Book Depository and decided that I had to have it. And this means that I have um, all three of her books now um, and all in paperback, especially because the paperback for like the American, you know, cover is not going to come out until like probably sometime next year. So I'm super excited to have this. This one also takes place in World War II. Um, her specialization is that she is a historical writer that goes into different historical eras that are not necessarily talked about very much in literature. So World War II, there's a ton of stuff on that. But this one, for example, takes place in... It takes place in Germany, but it features one of the most famous maritime disasters ever um, aboard the Willem Gustloff. So I'm interested in reading this. Um, I, for all the booktubers that have had advanced copies and have read it already, um, they've all said that it's really, really good. I've never read a bad Sepetis book, and I doubt that this will disappoint. The last book that I have here is one that was paid full price for, but it wasn't by me because it was my Valentine's gift from Matt, and it is The Last Unicorn by Peter S. Beagle. This is the novelized version of the wonderful story, although I'm pretty sure this did come first. Um, though I didn't know that. I knew it was a movie when I was a kid, and then when I got older, like a couple years ago, I saw that it was a graphic novel, and I read it. I did not know still that it was based off an actual novel. So the premise is pretty simple. It's following the tale of the last unicorn and how she wants to find others like her if they still exist and there's this like goblin devil guy or something that is trying to extinct them all and is succeeding except you know, she appears to be the last, but anyway, uh, I love the story, I love the mystical fantasy um, elements of it, and I'm excited to actually read the book. So I said at the beginning that there were 21 books to this haul. Um, it included three Nancy Drews um, that I got at Valley Village for like a dollar or buck fifty, um, because I am in the process of um, gradually over time collecting um, Nancy Drews. Um, in their older editions, not the bright, bright yellow ones, but like the more subdued, um, older vintage yellow ones. And so I found three of them, but I'm keeping them at my dad's house, um, you know, until I get my own house one day. So I went home recently and left them there, but just to mention them. Anyway, that is it for my haul today. Let me know down below if you have read any of these books or which ones you think that I should read first, um, you know, sort of build up my excitement over them. And yeah, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you have a great week and I shall see you guys soon with another video. Bye everyone.